I am Mrs. Gardner and I get to be your STEAM teacher this summer school and this whole, let's see, three weeks we get to spend together. I'm so excited we get to have some time for science, we get to have some time for, do you know what STEAM stands for? Science, technology, engineering, art, mathematics. We're going to be intermixing all of these subjects together and I'm excited to have you with us. So welcome to my classroom. I want to show you first a little bit about my classroom. We've been working on it. We've been building it. Um, we've been trying to make this shelter to be our filming studio so we can put all of our videos together. Have a look at some uh, changes we've made to the building so that way it's better for us. Look up here, the first one. It gets really hot over here. You see how we put this shade up? There's some space in between the shade and the building, so that way when the sun comes down, it hits the shade instead of the building, so it actually keeps us cooler. Come on in. Welcome to the classroom. We've had to make some changes to my storage shed, so that way we can make a good shelter and space to make our lessons. We put up some posters. I have some decorations, I brought some friends, I have an air conditioner. We've made this space ready so that way it can serve its purpose. And its purpose is to be a learning space. Now, a lot of other animals serve different purposes. Humans, our purpose might be to film science lessons. Your purpose may just be to learn right now. Some humans, they have purposes like building, like cooking, like being doctors or policemen or firewomen or we have lots of jobs and we have buildings that go with each of those jobs. So when you picked up your materials you got to see a very special animal that you brought home. Everybody have a look. You should have brought home a bottle with a little snail and some plants in it. Everything in here is everything it needs. The snail likes to eat the plant. The plant takes sunlight and makes air for the snail to breathe. They all have water and as long as you put this in a sunny window it's going to get everything it needs. Would you go ahead and take out your notebook right now? I want you to take some notes. I want you to look at your bottle and I want you to write down what do you notice is inside of it? What color is your snail? What color is your plant? What does the plant look like? Does it look like a flower? Does it look like a tree? What does it look like? So write down what do you notice is in your bottle? Then I want you to write down what do you wonder what questions do you have? What are you thinking about when you look at this? Do you wonder how big the snail will get? Do you wonder how big the plant will get? Maybe you wonder, do I need to have any air in here at all? Do I need to pour the water out? Do they have everything they need? So you may have noticed that the snail has a big shell on it. That shell is its home and it gets to carry it everywhere it goes. The bottle isn't the home, it's just the shell. The snail has access to plants, water, air. It has a whole habitat inside this bottle. But the home itself is just its shell. Think about your habitat that you live in. Do you live in a house or an apartment? Do you live somewhere where you can go outside and see a tree and some plants? Do you have access to water that comes out of the faucet? Here at my house, we have water that comes out of the ground. We have a well. And it's pretty tasty too. In my habitat, I get all of the resources that I need to survive. And so does this snail. This snail has all of the resources in this bottle. You don't even have to feed it. What do you think the snail is eating? 
it's probably gonna munch on this plant. It's gonna munch on some of the algae that's on the inside of the bottle. This snail has everything it needs. It has all of its resources. And it's going to grow and get bigger and even its shell, even though it's hard, the shell will grow to match the size of the snail. So there's no land in here. You probably noticed that. This is an aquatic snail. It likes to cling to the side of the bottle, but it doesn't necessarily need to go on land. Not all animals need land. Not all animals need to munch, munch, munch all day long. Some animals eat once every couple of days. Some animals eat multiple times in a day. But whatever they need, it's all going to be growing in their habitat all around them. So thinking about this snail shell, are we like snails? They're kind of squishy. I'm kind of squishy. But they have a big shell that they can carry around with them that keeps them safe. If you shrunk down to the size of a snail, could you survive? Would you have everything you need? If I shrunk down to the size of a snail, I could still get water and drink water. I could still eat chicken eggs. I have chickens and they lay eggs, so I could still eat chicken eggs. But my bed would be too big. If you were the size of a snail, could you use your own toilet? Would that be too big? Yeah, I don't think I could use mine either. There are lots of things that we would have to change about us if we became the size of a snail. So here's your challenge, you ready? I want you to think about how a snail carries their house on their back. And imagine that you shrunk down to that tiny little size and I want you to design a shelter for you that you can carry around. When I was designing my classroom space, I had to I had to put up some walls because well, I needed more shelter from the heat outside or when it was raining when we started, I needed shelter from the rain. So your learning target, it's what you're aiming for while you're doing your projects and while you're listening and learning, all right? I can use my imagination to design a shelter. A shelter is like your house, like a snail carries on its back. I can use my imagination to design a shelter that will help me survive if I shrink down to the size of a snail. All right, so if I shrunk down to the size of a snail, I'm gonna imagine I'm a, a pretty big snail. I'm gonna work with Miss um, Frizzle as my model. So if I were the size of, let's say a big snail, Miss Frizzle, and I needed a house that I could take with me, I need to think about what do I need to survive. I need water. I need shelter from I need shelter from the rain from the hot sun maybe I need somewhere to sleep because I can walk around during the day but I need somewhere to sleep so I need a bed what else do I need to survive I need somewhere to store my food yeah, somewhere to store my food. Okay, so I'm going to design a shelter that I can carry with me that can store a little bit of water, a little bit of food, maybe a bed that rolls out. And it has to be able to protect me from rain and hot sun. Okay, what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to draw my design. So, what if what if I had a backpack? So we're going to need some straps for the backpack. Let's draw it the other way. So there's the strap, the shoulder strap for my backpack. And I think I'm going to have something that opens up And like I lay in here so like 
If I'm laying down, I have a tent. Yes, it's going to be a tent. Okay, so I have a backpack that I can unroll. So it's going to keep me safe from the rain and the hot sun. Okay, check and check. Maybe I should add a pillow. If I add a pillow, it makes it a bed, right? Okay, so I'm going to add a pillow. Bed, check. Water and food. Hmm. Well, if I have to wear this on my back, maybe I can put a compartment right here that'll stand my tent up and I can store food and water in there. All right, this is my design. The next step is I have to make a prototype. A prototype is where you build a model. Um, it doesn't have to be the finished one. It's like making a rough draft of an invention. All right, let's have a look at what I have. So to make our backpack for Miss Frizzle, we have some cotton balls. I think that'll make a good pillow. I have some tape. I have some popsicle sticks and I have some construction paper. Let's see what we can make. turn out. So in my blueprints I designed something that doesn't look exactly like what I made but that's okay. 
When you're designing your blueprints or your first prototype, um, there's a reason it's a rough draft or it's a first. You're trying things out. So in my initial design, I thought, you know, I could just have a slant down to the feet. That looked kind of hard to do and she was longer than the materials I had, so I had to get creative again. A lot of creativity comes into science and engineering and math because somebody had to figure it out first, right? All right, so here's what I did. We have a tent that is removable and can be rolled up and stuffed into the backpack carrier that can also carry food and water. So I'm going to roll this up and put it in here. And then the bed with my cotton pillows. Always got to be comfortable. We can roll this one up so that way it tucks in to our little storage pack. And stay in place, doesn't drag while you walk. And then we have our backpack. What do you think, guys? If you shrunk down to the size of a snail, would this be enough for you? You get to make your own, and I'm excited to see what designs you're going to come up with. They're not all going to look the same. Yours may not look like mine. Great! I want to see what else you can come up with. I only have one head. I can only come up with one set of ideas. I'm excited to see what you can make, too. And uh, maybe you can make something better than this. We'll see. Remember, when you're done, I want to see all of your designs on Flipgrid. Make sure to check the link in your Google Classroom so that way you can go on and show us what you made. Explain how does it keep you safe? Where can you keep your food? Um, snails just got it right the first time. We've got a lot of creating to do. All right, can't wait to see. I'll see you on Flipgrid. Bye guys.